Hello everyone, my name's Jim and welcome back to my movie Obsession and it's time for another discussion off the cuff just talking about a movie I've just seen an in-depth discussion and it does seem like these are turning into me kind of watching acclaimed films and seeing if they you know are deserve the acclaim uh, this one is Life is Beautiful um, directed by Roberto Benigni and starring Roberto Benigni uh, 1997 Italian comedy drama film and you know this one it is heralded it's only actually got an 80 percent on rotten tomatoes i actually think that's too low kind of tells the story of roberto benigni plays guido orifis who is a jewish italian bookshop owner who um meets this lady who he falls in love with played by nicoletta brashi who is wife in real life actually and then the first sort of uh you know 45 minutes i guess of the film is him falling in love with this woman in just some of the most sweet scenes in all of cinema in my opinion you know they they don't come across it's it's basically he keeps meeting her in a series of chance encounters but they become not chance encounters because it becomes um kind of like a gimmick that he keeps meeting her he kind of shows helps her rediscover what love is again after she's in quite an unhappy marriage and Roberto Benigni, immediately the character of Guido, just this gentle, positive guy who you just can't, you, you look at him and you smile. And it, you know, the way that this film shows us this character, it's one of the most, he's one of the most heartwarming characters in all of cinema, I think, from what I've seen. It's, he just, <laughs> the outlook on life, the, the, the hope, the, the kindness, um, the belief that life is beautiful is what this guy radiates and eventually they do have a son called Joshua played by Giorgio Cantarini a fantastic little performance for the young actor but the film takes a dark turn of course when him and his son are taken away to Nazi concentration camp because this is obviously set during World War II and they are separated from their mother and his wife she goes to the concentration camp as well because she she demands to get on the train because she wants to be where her son and husband are and it's basically about once he gets to the concentration camp he tells his son it's all a game and he creates this imagination around it and he tells his son they've got to accumulate points and he, he he protects his son from knowing what's going on and it's just some of the most beautiful moments ever in cinema you know the way that Roberto Benigni as this character it's just he enters the horror of the Nazi concentration camp but he still tries to have his son believe in hope and this is a film about hope this is a film about humanity in the midst of horror in the midst of inhumanity this is a film about holding on to a belief that the human soul is inherently good it's about imagination it's about childhood never losing that inner child and it's about protecting children and you know i've heard some people say this actually it presents the holocaust a bit too jovially like comedically I don't agree at all you know yes he does protect his child by pretending it's all a game you know for example when the Nazi officers come in and start yelling the uh, instructions for the camp, Guido translates it so that his you know, son can hear and he's basically saying, we're playing this game, you know, you have to get points and it's stuff like that and, you know, when it, when people get disappear, he'll say, oh, they've, they're losing the game, we're getting closer to winning. So he just protects his son throughout this and it's just the scenes between him and his little boy are just absolutely heartwarming it's one of the most heartwarming films i've ever seen it actually has left me a bit flawed <laughs> it's just an unbelievable piece of work i think and you know roberto benigni you've got to take your hat off for starring and directing this you know he gives the film such a sense of um, life such a sense of uh, warmth you know even in this nazi concentration camp there are little moments between uh, Guido and his son where you just feel warm and you just feel overcome with emotion and love you know there's a moment where um, he, he somehow infiltrates the room with the record player in and is able to kind of blast it over the the yard so that his wife can hear it 
and just moments like that it just again just all about holding on to hope in such a horrible atrocious situation and again I'm, I'm confronted every time I see films about World War Two I am confronted with the sheer failure of humanity that was World War Two one of the ultimate failures of humanity an absolutely shameful despicable uh, I can't get over what they did to the Jews I think it's it, it's our worst moment it is it's our worst moment in in human history probably it's got to be you know to round up all these people because of how they were born and say that they're bad because of that and torture them burn them and make them work that's unbelievably inhuman and and the film doesn't shy away from that there are moments where we see the realities of this camp and we see how people are just at the end of you know at the end of life they're about to drop dead and they've got no hope but Guido holds on to hope Guido holds on to the belief that he can get his son through this and you know just little moments of imagination and childlike you know because Guido's a very childlike guy he's one of those fathers who always likes to make his children laugh and present everything as a game it's almost like a Robin Williams type character and it, he's just so charming he's so charming you know even when he's you know he'll look at his son he'll wink when something terrible has happened just to show him that this is all part of the game and we're going to be okay and you know the little actor who plays joshua is absolutely charming youngster in this and i do really like nicolette brachi as uh, dora the wife and mother uh, actually roberto benigni's wife in real life romance between them is so cozy and soft and warm and can't be corrupted by this concentration camp the love that they share it overcomes it it really is a sacrifice that he makes to protect his son from the horror of this world you know because children they had you know they don't they don't need to know they should be protected up to a certain age it breaks my heart that certain children you know there's a there's a heartbreaking scene in this where um, Joshua says to his father, I've been speaking to the other kids and they say that they f they're going to throw us in the oven or they're going to, you know, make clothing out of us. Just an absolutely heartbreaking thing to see a child saying. But of course Guida comes back and goes, no, they're trying to fool you, you know, they're trying to confuse you so that they can win the game and get more points. Just an absolutely unbelievable sweetness to this character of Guido to, to, to still keep it together. When his child is saying that something that a child should never have to say it's just a, a unique way to look at world war ii it's a way to give world war ii the idea that in the midst of it love beauty and genuinity will shine through in the midst of the nazis in humanity you can't beat love you can't beat humanity and it's such a human film from a Nigni here such a relatable film such a film that paints the reality of World War Two as what it was absurd you know as he's creeping around doing this game trying to make his son believe it's all a game you start you, you really see how absolutely absurd the idea of this was and how despicable it was it's a beautiful storybook like film but of course it injects it with this darkness and it's a film I've never seen anything like before to make a, a lovely sort of sweet fable out of the Holocaust is an unbelievable achievement from Roberto Benigni. You see it on paper, you just be like, no way, like how can this how can you write this? But he does. He makes a sweet and charming fable out of his relationship with his son amidst the Holocaust. And I think it's so so strong about hope, this film. You know, Guido never gave up hope. And he, he always believed he would get his son through it. He always believed he would see his wife again. And there's just such beauty to the film. It's one of the most beautiful, heartwarming, warm films I've ever seen. It's It really is at times like a soft blanket over you. But it doesn't compromise. When it needs to show the horrors, it does show them. And you always think, well, how can Guido talk his way around this one? But he always does. Because he's determined. Because he knows he has to get his son through it. What a film about a love between a father and a son playfulness of childhood the innocence of childhood the fact that children should not be exposed to something like this and the fact that they ever were is again one of the biggest failures of humanity but for, you know the fact that people like guido exist and people like guido 
are capable of existing shows that the human race hasn't lost yet. What a gentle, kind, sweet man who believes in good, who doesn't let his situation affect him, who has an inner peace. I absolutely adore that. It's a wonderful idea and it's true, there are many people like this and you do end the film with thinking life is beautiful and you've just seen a film about the Holocaust but you still come out thinking life is beautiful. And I'm just absolutely blown away by this film guys, I, I just really recommend you guys watch it. You might take it the other way, there are people who are giving this negative review saying it's glamour, you know, not glamorises but trivialises the Holocaust, I don't agree at all. Um, I think it's good that there's actually a film out there that tackles the Holocaust and comes out with a feel-good style, I guess. Not to trivial, you know, it's not trivialising. It's uh, trying to take a horrible time and actually show that no matter what the Nazis did at that time, I guarantee there were well, there were there were people like Anne Frank. There were people in concentration. You know, Anne Frank when she got to the concentration camp never gave up to the end. You know, it's, I feel like films like this defeat the Nazis in a way, because I will guarantee there were good people, good Jewish people, lovely people in the concentration camps. Well, they were all good people. They all, no, none of them deserved it whatsoever. Um, but I guarantee there were people who held on to love and had little relationships in there. And that's, that's what's strong. Those are the, the ties that bind. That's what means something. If you can still love, if you can still believe in good in the midst of, harrowing circumstances you've won you bulletproof because you you've overcome you know you don't have to then defeat it you've overcome with your spirit with your soul not being destroyed still believing in good still be believing in the possibilities in hope you've won and this film really is in my view a, a, a tribute to those people people who have been in situations and still stayed positive and I'm just, I absolutely adore the film. I absolutely am blown away. I think it's an absolutely staggering piece of work. And it deserves more than 80%. And Roberto Benigni, a charming, charming guy, um, creates this lovely atmosphere through direction in the first half of the film and then keeps this playfulness going on even in the midst of the Nazi camp. But I love the movie so much. I recommend you guys watch it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below definitely watch this movie let me know and we can discuss it it comes unbelievably recommended from me but thanks for watching another in-depth discussion guys i'll be back with some more videos soon please subscribe if you enjoyed and i'll see you next time